Hi there, my name is Chad Trofgerben, and this is your tutorial for the week. Over the past few weeks, I've been going through the process of designing a character inside of Adobe Draw. The goal is to take that character into animation software and then animate them out. But today we're going to continue the design process and I'll show you a technique you can use to add a shading effect to your character when using Photoshop. So this is useful if you plan to use an image-based rig. And with the character I have created, we can take it to Illustrator and use a vector-based rig for animation as well. And I plan to, in time, show all of that. Basically, this is an open-ended course of sorts. I plan to go in many different directions with it. So today, we're going to focus on that shading effect. So we're going to jump over to my iPad first to import the file over to Photoshop. I'm currently looking at my iPad and I want to tap on Adobe Draw to go inside. And here we have our character that we were working on in the previous weeks. The only thing I have done here from last week to this week is I went in and added some amazing chest hairs. <laughs> and all I did was just take my tapered brush and go in and just add those lines and I did so on the arms as well. So that's the only thing I have done differently. Everything else is as we left it last week. With Adobe Draw and Adobe Sketch on the iPad Pro, if you tap the Share button on the top right, you'll see that there is an Adobe Desktop Apps function. And if we tap that, we can bring this into Illustrator or Photoshop. So we could also choose to put this into our Creative Clouds folder. Because when you subscribe to the Creative Cloud, you get access to the ability to add files to your cloud directory, and then you can retrieve them, in this case, on your computer. But we're going to go with the Adobe Desktop Apps option. And as I said, we'll be using Photoshop for this, but eventually we can try out the Illustrator workflow as well. So tap on Photoshop. And I'm just going to wait now on my computer as it's going to launch Photoshop for me. Once this has transferred over, of course, and you can see in the top right, we have this wheel transferring the file over to the computer. And it can sometimes take a little bit. It just depends on how many details you have. But now on my computer, you can see we are launching Photoshop automatically, and it's going to bring the file right onto my desktop. We can see inside of Photoshop that all of our layers are intact from the application. And they even retain their properties and names. So if we were to change the opacity of a layer inside of Adobe Draw, you would see that show up here. Also, if you were to hide a layer, that will also be hidden when you bring it over to Photoshop. But what we want to do first before we add our shading is come in and rename all these layers so that way it's more organized. I'm just going to hide everything and we'll start at the top here with this first layer. The easiest way, at least that I have found, is to come in and just hide and reveal the layer and that way you can see what it is. Here, I appear to have a blank layer. So I'm just going to come down and remove it with the trash can. Then we can go to the next layer and this is the hair, so I'll double click and rename it to hair. And I'm just going to keep going. This is the mouth. We have the front frame for the glasses. Then you have the nose, back frame. We have the eyes, the head coming down here. If we click off and on on this, it's hard to see, but this is actually the arm hair that I made for the front arm. You can see it right there. So we'll just leave that as is. In fact, there's really no reason to have the arm hair separated from the front arm. So I'm going to reveal the front arm as well. And I will select both layers just by holding in shift and clicking on that bottom layer. Right click, come down and choose to merge the layers. That way it's one. And now I can rename this one to f.frontarm. 
There we go. So F dot arm for front arm. Come down now to the draw layer. Rename this to front leg. And then we have the chest hair. And I'm going to do the same thing now for the body. We'll come in and just merge these two layers together. Then rename that to body. You then have your back leg. And then you have your other arm hair for the back arm and then the back arm itself. So once again, merge those layers, B dot arm. And then the other two layers on the bottom, the first is just the sketch that I used. And then the second is just a white background, which we don't need since we plan to animate the character, we'll be using an alpha channel. I'm just going to unlock the background layer and then remove both the image and background layers. We can go through and combine some of these layers as well. And I might hold on to that for another video because I'm not quite sure what I want to combine yet. It really depends on where you plan to animate and how you plan to animate. It might be useful in some cases to have the nose on its own layer, but other times using other software, it might make more sense to have the nose with the head on that layer. So. Again, that kind of depends, and since I'm kind of just winging this, <laughs> we're going to leave that for another video so I can think about it. But let's go ahead and add a basic shading effect using Photoshop's tools. So I'm going to start with the front arm since it's easier, and it will be a good basic example. And again, there are numerous, countless ways to work inside of Photoshop, and I'm the first to admit that I'm not a native expert in Photoshop, I use it for just basic things. So I would not be surprised if there's a more effective way to do what I'm about to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. So we're going to hide everything except for the front arm. You have it revealed right here. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and drag up to duplicate the layer to create a second front arm. And I'll use Command L on that layer to bring up my levels. And all I'm going to do is grab that white dial and bring it all the way down to black. And then click OK. Taking the lasso tool, I'm now going to come in and create the area that I want to shade using this new duplicated layer. So we're just going to start near the top here. I'll come down like this. I'm going to try to keep the width of this as consistent as possible. So something about perhaps like that, come down and I can just kind of end it right there. And then we'll go all the way up and wrap it around so that we create a selection just like this. And then I can hit the delete key on my keyboard to remove it. And that's all we need to do. So I'm just going to Go to the next layer I want to work with. Let's just come down to the leg and we'll do the same thing. I'll hide the arm and it's shading because there's really no need to have that present right now. Hold down Alt, drag up and release for front leg. Command L, bring your levels down. Click OK. Use the lasso tool. I'm going to come in and just try to create a similar looking shading effect. And again, I'm moving kind of quick with this, so it's probably not going to be the best thing in the world, but I hope you get the idea. So we're just going to come in and select like that and then delete. So now you have something that looks like this. Since the back leg is a copy of the front leg, I'm just going to reveal the back leg really quick. Hold down Alt on front leg copy and then drag down below body so we are above back leg. And then I'll grab the move tool. We'll come in and we're just going to bring that layer over and attach it like so. Now, if you want variety, you would obviously draw the legs separately, but also you would do the shading separately as well. I'm just showing you some shortcuts here you can take if you want. And we can do the same for the back arm as well. I'm just going to grab that shading layer for the front arm, hold an alt and bring it down to back arm. 
make the back arm visible so we can see what we're doing and then bring that shading over. Bring it up like so. And I can trim this up as well by using the eraser tool. Bring up the size a bit and the hardness. I'll just come in and trim that up like so, so that it's matching the arm in terms of where the shape is. So now we have all that set. Let's go ahead and do the body. So we'll bring that in and I'm going to keep the shading on for these limbs, the front arm and the legs, just so I can use that as a guide because the shading should connect with those pieces. So we're going to take the body, hold an alt and drag up to create that duplicate, command L, and we can bring the output levels down and click OK. Now, it's a little bit hard to tell in this case, but we can always hide it, or we can come in and change the opacity of this layer so we can still see the shading of the arms and the legs to give us a guide. And then we'll take the lasso tool, come in, and I'll start with the neck. And we're just going to come down like so. Actually, let me redo that. Once again, come down like this. I'm using my mouse, so it's a little bit more difficult. Sometimes I'm I'm more used to using a tablet for these types of things, but that's okay. We're just going to come in and come down like this. And then try to wrap it down near the bottom with the legs. And come back up. And down and release. Now, I created this shape wrong. <laughs> I did the opposite. I was supposed to select all of this part right here to delete it, but that's okay. I can use command shift I to do an inverse select and then hit delete. And that will remove the area that I intend to remove. So here I can bring the opacity back up to 100% just so it matches everything else. We can come in with the limbs just to see and make sure everything is looking good and it appears to be. So now I'm going to bring the head back as that is our final area we want to work on here. Now there's a couple ways we could tackle the head. We could do a very similar thing we just did with the body parts. The only thing to keep in mind is if later on you intend to lip sync, if you want to have multiple mouth poses or heads, you're going to have to create that shadow multiple times. So it depends on how you approach it. If you have your jaw dropping when lip syncing, you could just make sure the shadow goes to where the mouth starts. So that way the chin doesn't have a shadow and you can just have it drop and you don't have to worry about it. But what I'm going to do right now is just create a basic shading effect for the head. And if we need to deal with the mouth syncing later on, we can do so. First, before I create my shading layer, I'm going to come in with the hair and bring it down so that it's above the head. And then I'm going to merge the hair with the head. So we're just going to highlight both layers, come down and choose merge layers. And we'll rename this one to head and hit enter. Now we can duplicate this head for the shading. Use command L and reduce the output levels. Click OK. And we're just going to come in with the lasso tool. I'll start right about here near the top of the head. And I'm just going to come down like this. And sort of just taper the shading off like so. So it looks about like that. And again, I could do a different shading effect for this, but we're just going to create a shape like this that goes down to the neck. Now keep in mind, I selected this wrong, so we're going to use Command Shift I to do an inverse select and then press Delete to remove that area. So now with the shading in place, the final step is to make sure it doesn't look as extreme because right now it's completely black and that's not going to work. I mean, it could work. I mean, it depends on what you're doing. If you wanted to create like a silhouette effect, then this definitely could work. But in this case, we want to soften the effect up. So we're going to come in and using the opacity tool on the shading for the head, we're just going to reduce this down to 30%. 
Now, depending on what you want to do, you could also come in and add like a Gaussian blur to this to help soften up the effect. But for now, I just want to come in and change the opacity on all of the shading areas just to get an idea of what this is going to look like when everything is softened up. Because if I feel the need, I can then add a blur effect after the fact. So we're just going to get that opacity reduced. One more here. So on our front arm, we can reduce the opacity or on the back arm, I should say, come in and there we go. So now you have something that looks like this. And I think I'm going to leave my shading set to how this looks. Again, I'm not 100% sure with the head. I might go in and change that later on. I might actually go in and change the shading a little bit. <laughs> Looking at this now, just really quick, I'm going to come in to the body and we'll take the brush tool. I'm just going to change that to black. Zoom in. And increase the size of the brush. Make sure I'm on the correct layer for this. So I might come in and do something that's more like this. There we are. I think that looks a little bit more how I intend for this to look there. So I'm going to pause the video here. Again, the shading isn't exactly what I want. I could spend all day on this stuff, really, and I do when I'm not recording tutorials. But with the tutorials, we kind of have to expedite this and make some quick decisions. So between now and next week, I'll try to figure out what the next step should be, if we should clean up the shading a little bit more, or if we should jump in and start animating. But until then, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week.